I'm Alex Michelson. This week on The Issue Is... This was always an exercise in raw partisan politics. The top-ranking Republican in the House of Representatives, Kevin McCarthy of California, joins us for an exclusive one-on-one. And... You should ask me to spend even more. Former Mayor Michael Bloomberg tells us why California could be the key to this whole presidential campaign. Then... As a state of California, we are stronger together. Why some of the biggest names in Hollywood are California strong. Put me in, coach. I'm ready to play. And our house band this week, the San Pedro High School Golden Pirate Regiment. California's only statewide political show. The issue is, starts right now. Thanks, guys. You sound great. We're going to hear more of them a little bit later on in the show. Welcome to The Issue Is. I'm Alex Michelson. We're excited to launch in our newest market this weekend, Sacramento. A few weeks ago, we launched on Fox 58 in Bakersfield. That's the hometown of our next guest. He is the top-ranking Republican in the House. Congressman Kevin McCarthy joins us from Capitol Hill. Leader McCarthy, welcome to The Issue Is for the first time. Well, thank you, Alex, for having me. I appreciate it. It's good to have you. Uh, Let's talk about one of the big stories of this week, which is Iran. This week, you introduced or tried to introduce a resolution to back up the Iranian people, express the U.S. support for them. Democrats didn't even bring that to a vote. Why do you think that is? America has a long history standing those standing with those who provide and want freedom. That's why I introduced the resolution. Non-political, just standing with them and condemning Iran for shooting down a commercial airline and killing 176 innocent people, first lying about it before they ever came forward after we showed uh, a tape of the missile hitting the plane. Are we safer because Qasem Soleimani is no longer alive? Because there's some people that believe that we're not. Of course we are safer. Just think of what General Petraeus said. This is bigger than bin Laden. The idea, if you could look in the future, And if back in 1998, if we were able to take out bin Laden, would 9-11 ever have happened? Soleimani was planning much more. So the answer is yes, we are much safer. The world is safer. So you're saying that he was planning planning an attack that was worse than 9-11? What, what do you mean by that? I, didn't, I, did, I did not use the word that he was planning an attack worse than 9-11. He was planning another attack. Mm-hmm. Um, what, what Petraeus said is taking out Salman Sol- Ali was bigger than bin Laden. Let's talk for a moment about impeachment. Um, you've suggested that uh, Speaker Pelosi waiting on giving over the articles of impeachment to the Senate is in a way to help Joe Biden and hurt Bernie Sanders. Why do you think that is? Well, it's very clear. Had she sent the impeachment articles over when she said it was so urgently, the Speaker, we'd be close to being done with this trial. But we are sitting with February 3rd, the Iowa caucuses. But what's going to happen if you are a U.S. Senator, and there's four U.S. Senators running for President, right now Bernie Sanders is in the lead in Iowa, you have to stay in your chair, you can't have your phone, and six days a week you have to sit there and not talk. So you can't campaign. Who can campaign? Joe Biden. What is the reason why she would hold these papers? No other reason in the process. Is it, is it, and po- if this is, is it possible, though, she's doing what she said, which is she's trying to get witnesses and use that for leverage uh, to force there to be witnesses in the Senate trial? Or does it have to be this conspiracy? I don't know what you're talking about conspiracy, but remember what just happened inside the House. She controlled all when it came to witnesses. If she wanted John Bolton to be a witness, why didn't she subpoena John Bolton? The only thing that has changed are the four senators who are running for president are now denied the ability to campaign. The DNC should actually have those other individuals make a pledge. As long as the campaign or the trial is on, they should not campaign either because it gives them an advantage over the others. And Bernie Sanders has been through this many times. If you are a supporter of Bernie Sanders, you know this. You understand it, and you're seeing it happen to you one more time. So you believe that Joe Biden should not campaign? Not if the others are not allowed to. It's a disadvantage to them. Hmm. Um, Do you think the president shouldn't uh, be allowed to campaign? He's the defendant in all of this. Well, the president can campaign, and anybody who's running against the president in the primary can campaign as well. Right now, we're in a primary process. 
Um, and so from that prior says anybody on the Republican side, the Republicans are being very fair about this process. That's the difference. You have uh, gotten to know the president pretty well during all this. I know he's very fond yes. of you. Um, what do you think is the, the biggest misconception about the president that's out there after spending time with him personally uh, and getting to know him? I think the biggest misconception is that he's rigid in his positions. This is a man that wants to get something done. This is a man that can work with all sides. I've watched him in the rooms before. It's almost as though the Democratic Party won't allow somebody to work with him. Um, he wants to get prescription drugs done. They won't allow it. They actually changed the bill after every Republican and every Democrat voted for it in committee before it came to the floor, so it couldn't pass. Um, I watched this president. He doesn't sleep much. He is always studying. He's very focused. Um, and he doesn't take things personally when people see where it is. He can still work with you in every step of the way. He's a little New York. He will push back. But, and I've also sat with him many times on other foreign leaders. These foreign leaders respect him a great deal. And the one thing you should do, do is judge him on the results. You've got the strongest economy you've had in more than 50 years. We have more women in the workforce than we do men. We, it's stronger for anyone of a Hispanic, African-American, Asian inside this economy. We're rebuilding our military. Right. California, if you take a more micro approach, here we are where 12% of the nation's population lives, but our number one issue in California is homelessness. Mm -hmm. And I would like to see our governor actually work with this president instead of just combating against them every step of the time. Do you think the federal government needs to do more to fix homelessness in California? And if so, what does that look like? I think the federal government is actually putting a very big offer out there. I think the major problems within homelessness in California is California. I think what you find with Prop 47 and Prop 57, the decriminalizing of drugs, the removal of people from jail so they're not able to get the treatment. 51% of the people in Kern County that are homeless are drug addicted. 24% happen to have a mental illness. They make it unaffordable at times because of what they propose over the top. They, they disallow people from being able to get treatment. I work actually on a local level trying to get homelessness taken care of. We have court cases that make it more difficult. If you look at all the major cities, there's one major city in California that homelessness has actually gone down in. And that happens to be San Diego. Mm -hmm. Just so happens it happens to be a Republican mayor, but he's tackled this issue uh, on the forefront. Then we look at places like LA that is having diseases from the medieval times come back. Right. When is the moment in time that we say this is a crisis beyond politics? Right. And of course, that mayor of San Diego is Kevin Faulkner. Um, a, a few moments about California politics. Uh, Republicans have sort of struggled in the state. You know, there's a Democratic supermajority um, in both the Assembly and in the Senate. Why do you think the Republicans have struggled? And, and what do you think is the solution to that? Well, I think the first thing is, if you look at the Republican, we've got nothing to do, nowhere to go but up. Uh, I think we've got a great opportunity. <laughs> That's an great optimistic opportunity. way to say it. Look at yeah. okay. I'm an optimistic conservative. Yeah. Um, I see pendulum swing. I see a moment in time, if you go back just a few decades ago, Republicans had everything except one, one office statewide. This will come back and forth, and I think what you see, you want, you want to have an open process. And one thing I find from the Republican Party, we, we have to ha offer solutions. Um, I, I see California also has an affordability problem. You have a lot of people leaving the state. You have high taxes. Um, and I, I think for a couple different places, how can we govern better? How can we reach the challenges of the future? And a lot of them happen to be from economics, but also happens to be the environment. You're going to find within the, the Republican Party inside this house, we're going to roll out a number of bills that show you how to deal with the environment in the future while same time building the economy where technology allows you to make that assistance and that help. And of course, if the Republicans win back uh, the House, you would most likely be the Speaker of the House. Uh, a couple quick questions because we like to have some fun on this show. I know sure. you are a huge Dodger fan. I've actually seen you at Dodger games before. That's important to you, as it is to me. <laughs> we were cheated. Yes, we that's were my cheated. question. What happened uh, with the World Series, and what do, you, what do you think should be the response? Of course, the, the report being that the Astros uh, cheated in the World Series in, in 2017, and potentially the Red Sox in 2018 as well. Well, I, I think uh, baseball had taken a very right approach. They were very strong punishments we haven't seen before. Um, but, you know, this is, this is what hurt the Dodgers. And the way we should take this, 
buck up, come back, and let's win the World Series next year like we've been able to do before. All right, and one last thing. We, we do something called personal issues. This is where we take 30 seconds just to get to know you a, a little bit better and ask you about some of your favorites. It's rapid fire, so hopefully quick answers, sure. okay? You ready? So okay. here we yeah. go. Uh, who is your favorite athlete? My favorite athlete? I would say Bo Jackson. Uh, favorite book? Favorite book, um, uh, well, my favorite author is Ayn Rand. I like Fountainhead and the others. So. Very Republican answer. Favorite Democrat? Joe Kennedy. Uh, favorite meal? Favorite meal? Uh, the pizza, chicken, Parmesan pizza at Frigati's. Favorite president of all time? Uh, by far, Abraham Lincoln. And lastly, best thing about being a Californian? The weather the weather. And I got to say, when we asked Congresswoman Karen Bass who her favorite Republican is in that same game, she said you. <laughs> she, I tell you what, you only made me pick one. Karen Bass okay. is an amazing human being and we work fabulous together on, on uh, foster care and others. All right. Well, and we, we also like to play music on this show, Congressman. So we actually have a house band here this week. This is the yes. top ranked marching band in all of California. They're from San Pedro High School. So they're going to play a, a little for you as we go to break. Um, oh, and, uh, and we thank you very much. Hopefully, all right, hit it, guys. Here we go. It's pretty cool, huh? Congressman yes. McCarthy, thank you so much. Hope you'll visit us in studio sometime soon. Thank you. Love it. Up next, Michael Bloomberg. But first, more of the band. We'll be right back. Senator Warren. What did you think when Senator Sandru Sanders told you a woman could not win the election? I disagreed. This week, the Democrats once again debated, and we once again brought together a focus group of undecided Democrats to watch with us. Joe Biden tonight. What did we make of Joe Biden? I think he portrayed himself as a senior leader, but we knew that going in. It's incomprehensible that I would think that a woman could not be president of the United States. Mm -hmm. What did we make of Bernie Sanders' performance? I don't understand why he looked like he couldn't hear or see any person who was asking him a question. <laughs> like, he literally was like, huh? Is that you? When people look at Bernie, they know what they're yeah, getting. Yeah. They yeah. don't expect anything different. The only people on this stage who have won every single election that they've been in are the women. She really knows her stuff when it comes to policy, and that's why I think if you put her next to somebody like Trump, Trump who knows nothing about policy, yeah. has zero experience, she's just going to excel. Uh -huh. As a business person, some of the things she says makes me cringe because <laughs> I know she knows better and she says it anyway. He'll have to stand next to an American war veteran and explain how he pretended bone spurs made him ineligible to serve. As the stage gets smaller, his message gets more precise and, and, and more direct as to what he wants to do. Did anybody's opinion change tonight? Uh, I would say mine did. I, so? I, I totally came out for Elizabeth Warren tonight. Mm. This did it for me. You're in. I'm in. Jeannie's opinion was changed. Anybody mm. else's opinion I changed? I like Pete a little more than before because <laughs> yeah. I feel mm. like he stood out from the rest of the candidates. He was the one with the fresh perspective saying, Smart. we shouldn't fight about this, we should fight about this. One of the Democrats not on the stage this week was former New York City Mayor Mike Bloomberg. He's launched what could be the most expensive campaign well, ever, you, focusing much of his effort on California. We were with him in downtown LA where he opened up a campaign office and talked with us. Mayor Michael Bloomberg, um, welcome to The Issue Is. Thank you. Thank you for having me. All right, I'll start with this question that I ask every candidate. There's yep. a big, crowded field. What makes you different? Why you? I have experience in tackling the kind of problems that most cities in this country have and that where the federal government can really help. So that's one thing. Number two, I know how to beat Bo Donald Trump, and I don't think the others do. Why? You know, billionaire has turned into a bad word for some on the left. Why is being a billionaire a good thing? And how do you convince voters that your success is something that they could emulate? Look, number one, I'm spending my billions of dollars to try to defeat Donald Trump. So if you don't want Donald Trump to be the president for the next four years, you should ask me to spend even more. I don't think you want me to spend less. And in terms of opportunity, my father made $6,000, the best year of his life. I started with nothing. I worked my ways up. I got fired. I started a company. We employ 20,000 people now. And I give all of the profits of the company, or virtually all, to help this country, charities around the world. What do you think is the most important policy difference between you and the rest of the field? 
I can't speak for other people. I just know that in my case, the things that I advocate are practical. I can show you where they work before and an awful lot of them. I know how to implement them. I know how to bring people together and build teams. It's the teams that do the work. And so when somebody says, elect me, I'm going to do something, it leaves me a little bit cold. You said that uh, California is a really important part of your strategy. You're yes, here, you're opening yes, an office here in with, California. It's the biggest state with uh, the most delegates. You're on TV a lot, which we appreciate. Great to see you on I'm so sure much. I'm the networks <laughs> love it. What is the strategy, though, for winning this state, the biggest state? How do you pull it off You've here? got to get out there and explain to them why I'm the best choice for California and for the rest of this country. And you do that with the ads you talked about. You do it with interviews, like with you right now. And a lot of people watch your show, and they'll get a chance to see and decide whether or not they think I'd be the right person. Um, we write policy papers for policy wonks who want to read that kind of stuff. Um, but it, I've just got to get out there and, and meet as many people as I can. And just to wrap things up, we play a real quick 20 second game called Personal Issues where we just get to know you a little bit better as a okay. candidate. All right, so who is, uh, who's your role model? Um, Harry Truman, who integrated the army, thereby uh, changing the social fabric of the country, stood up to Douglas MacArthur, thereby establishing the principle of civilian control, and brought in the Marshall Plan, which if he, somebody had done it after World War I, we wouldn't have had World War II. And real quickly, uh, just quick answers. Favorite, uh, favorite TV show? Uh, I don't watch television very much. Favorite book? Um, new book, uh, been out about a year, Catastrophe 1914, written by Max Hastings. It's about one year where World War I started. It's fascinating reading, and you, you, people should get the book and read it. Favorite athlete? Um, I don't know. Uh, I was a Johnny Unitas fan when I was a Colts fan going way back. And lastly, the most important thing you want people in California to know about you? Uh, I'm honest. I'm hardworking. Uh, I always tell the truth, and when I make a mistake, I stand up, fess up to it, and apologize, and then put my mind back to doing it again better. Mayor Michael Bloomberg, great to have you in the Golden State. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you so much. Thanks. Our thanks to Mayor Bloomberg. Up next, we take you to what may be the biggest celebrity softball game ever. But first, more music from one of the top bands in the state, the San Pedro High School Golden Pirate Regiment with Hit the Line. Our thanks to our house band this week from San Pedro High School. This week, some of the best athletes and entertainers in California showed us why they are California strong. Only here can you see baseball's biggest stars, like NL MVP Cody Bellinger on a field with Hollywood's biggest stars, like Machine Gun Kelly, Tiffany Haddish, and Adam Sandler. What does the Sandman bring to the baseball diamond? Uh, a little bit of thickness, uh, a slow, <laughs> a slow run up to first, the first baseline. Actor Rob Lowe a bit intimidated to be fielding these big league hitters. When they come up, if I'm in the field, I am turning my back, hiding my head, and just trying not to get killed by <laughs> line drive. It's a picture-perfect day at Pepperdine University in Malibu where a sellout crowd is supporting the second annual California Strong Celebrity Softball Game. Hey everyone, Jared Goff here with the LA Rams. Rams quarterback Jared Goff and baseball stars Ryan Braun, Mike Moustakis, Christian Yelich, and Brewers co-owner Mike Adonacio started this nonprofit via a group text after many of them had to evacuate their own homes during the Woolsey fire. Guys. In less than two years, they've already raised more than $3 million to assist Californians impacted by disasters. What's the message you think everybody can learn from California Strong? Uh, probably you never really know how, how much you can do for your community. And just being able to see the people that we're able to affect and impact, it's, it's a special time. For some reason, they invited me, a non-celebrity, to play in this year's game. I hadn't swung a bat in years. First pitch? Swing and a miss. Swing like an anchor. Next pitch. Contact. I run as fast as I've ever run before, hoping to beat the throw. It goes long, and I go charging into second. Eventually, I even score a run. It's 
all I wanted was to not be a total complete embarrassment, and at least I think I accomplished that. The MVP, actor Christopher Backus. Two for two, both home runs. This was my view as he came home. Did it kind of feel like a dream to be on a field with literally the best players in baseball and you're dominating them? Yeah, no, it's a dream come true. Wife and teammate Mira Sorvino, proud. I'm really proud of him because he, you know, he's a great dad. Our team, managed by former NL MVP Ryan Braun, dominates. Final score, 12 to 4. The key was good players, man. Good players always make bad coaches look good. This game, though, about much more than a trophy. It's about unity. As a state of California, we are stronger together. For more information on the organization, head to CaliforniaStrong.org. For more information on our show, go to TheIssueIsShow.com. You can send us your comments at TheIssueIs at FoxTV.com. And don't forget to subscribe to our podcast. Go to the issue is wherever you subscribe. Up next, more from our band, the San Pedro High School Golden Pirate Regiment. Here they are with Ain't Nobody's Business. <laughs> Welcome back. This whole show, we've been featuring music from the San Pedro High School Golden Pirate Regiment. You see them behind me. They are hoping to represent the entire state of California at the National Memorial Day Parade in Washington, D.C. They've already won the LAUSD and the SoCal Championships for the past five years in a row. Now they are looking for the public's help. Andrew Soto, the drum major, representing them, a senior. Um, welcome to The Issue Is. We hear you may be a senator one day, so maybe we'll see you in that context one day. Um, you were just in the Rose Parade in front of the whole world. What was that like? Uh, it was an amazing experience, just the opportunity to represent our entire district in front of millions of people. It was awesome and it was the perfect way to end the year. And, and now we're talking about going to Washington DC, the Memorial Day Parade, but you need some of the public's help to help get you there in terms of funding this trip, right? Uh, yeah, of course. So for a lot of us, it's the first time out of state. For some people, it's even the first time on a plane. Uh, so we need some help fundraising. You can go to our Facebook page at San Pedro High School Golden Pirate Regiment. We have links there and Facebook fundraisers for people to help us out. Yeah. Um, so uh, what are we going to play for the big finale? Uh, we're playing I Want to Be Like You. Okay, here we go. From the Jungle Book, right? Yes. All right. Here they are. Take it home, baby. Mm -hmm. 